How strong is the evidence that cannabis contributes to psychosis? Professor Robin Murray is at the forefront of British research into the matter at the Institute of Psychiatry. Hello, Hi. Professor Murray. Nice Hello. to meet you. Hi. I have to say, I'm quite scared about the headlines I've been reading. There's one that said, psycho risk, one joint. What do you think about these, these scary headlines? I think probably the risk of what, taking one joint and going psychotic is the equivalent of taking one drink of wine and becoming alcoholic, so it's negligible. Uh, it's ridiculous. Cannabis taken regularly, several joints a day over a period of years, will in fact increase one's risk up to, to doubling it. Some people have a greater liability to going psychotic on cannabis, whereas other people seem to be able to smoke without really coming to any great uh, harm at all. People vary in their uh, li genetic liability, and then there are the, the, the environment, the social factors, whether they have a really difficult life, uh, these sort of factors also contribute. But cannabis may add to these factors and tip them over the edge into psychosis. So though long-term use of cannabis could trigger psychosis, the more lurid headlines are wrong. You have the pro-cannabis lobby who say cannabis is a sacred boon to mankind. It has no adverse effects. It's hardly even a drug. It's something that will enhance your, your, your life. And then you have the protagonist or the prohibitionists who think it's the, it's the devil's construction, <laughs> cannabis, that, as you say, one puff and you go mad. I mean, each of these are equally ridiculous, and I think that has been the difficulty that somehow or other there's been an ideological dispute and relatively little research.